This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Cross your Isn't this amazing? So when they give you the takeout, they do little different animals, and I think these are swans. What's everybody doing? Is anyone listening to me? What? You realize everybody's just on their phone? I'm on my iPad. Well, what do you want us to do? I mean, just look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah hold it up. I'm going to take a picture. Why do we have to take a picture of everything? That's cool. I'm going to put it in the family group text. But everybody's sitting right here. That's a funny picture right there. How's it going, Mom? John Luke, it's right here. This is the real thing. Look, I'm all for cell phones. I use them for just about everything. Family time used to be board games and capture the flag. Now my kids are DMing me to borrow the car. You are missing out on the great things of life, like takeout that comes in the shape of an animal. Yeah, it is, man. That's from the um, the series Wednesday nights on A&E, 9 p.m. Season 11 of Duck Dynasty is here. Yeah. And this is a show, Heather, that I, I've watched over the seasons mm -hmm. um, because it's reminiscent of a, a, a lifestyle that my, my grandparents and their parents um, were privy to. Mm -hmm. And that's to be able to live off the land, live off the earth. Yeah. You know, go into the woods and if you need something to eat, you don't have to buy it in a package. You can go shoot it and kill it <laughs> and skin it and cook it and digest it. All on your own. And with the feces, you throw that fertilizer oh, in the garden. Gosh. Right. <laughs> right. Grow it's some bush. <laughs> grow some bush. You grow some bush. Recycling system. Some great purple. Whatever you want to use it for. Right. You know, but I thought it was a, a great inside look on, on a lifestyle in this country that we're not always privy to. And uh, we have one of the uh, founders of the Duck Dynasty with us right now. The one and only Willie is here. How we doing? Good What's to up, be man? here. How you doing, man? It's good to be here. Yo, man, you're a TV star now. Yeah. What's that like? <laughs> uh, well, I get recognized a lot more than I used to. Because yeah. when you look like this, it's kind of hard to hide. So uh, <laughs> yeah. even in New York, even yeah. in New York. <laughs> yeah. I went in Starbucks in Midtown, and actually the employee said, you don't have to pay. We're just honored you were here. So right here Aww. in New York, yeah. So that's pretty nice. In Brooklyn, you'd look like a hipster, though. Pretty nice. Uh, actually, uh, another guy came up and said, are you from Brooklyn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A guy trying to give me a CD said, you must be from Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. So you get profiled a lot. I do, yeah. yeah. My, my brother calls it facial profiling. Facial so, yeah, profiling. they look and uh, thank you. Instead of racial. There you go. Uh, facial, facial instead of racial. racial. Profile. Yeah, that is hilarious. Uh, that's great, man. <laughs> With that profile, what are some of the like myths people think about you when they see you? Because you well, you you're from the part of the country you're from. You got a beard. What's kind of like the outlandish? Thing well, you obviously, see? you're. I guess you're kind of backwoods and ignorant and yeah, redneck, possibly homeless. Uh, I have gotten <laughs> that. I've gotten that a few times. Oh I've gotten the homeless. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten the homeless thing a few times, but so take the sandwich. I, so I went by. Well, I, I was coming from New Orleans, so I, yesterday I knew I was coming to New York, and I thought I'd be freezing to death. It's not as cold as I thought, but I w bought this big giant coat in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and there's no way if you're without home you could afford that jacket. So that was my basically. You looked at me, and thought that, eh, but you saw the jacket and thought, no, nah, he can't be homeless. So yeah, there a you nice go. jacket, man. Got it's a hard nice to jacket. hide that money, huh? Yeah, and plus, you're a college graduate, right? I am. Yes. You sound surprised. No, not oh, okay, at all. Okay. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> what did you, uh, what was your major in college? I'll, gi I'll, I'll give you two guesses. Just... Okay. Um, business. Nope. That's always the first one. It's not business. Uh, 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 recreational sport fishing. Oh, <laughs> you actually come closer than most people. Physical yep. education. I got a PE degree. You got a PE degree. <laughs> I basically went in. My wife, well, I didn't think I was going to go to uh, college. My, my wife was going to college, and she said, you need to go as well if we're going to get married. So I basically found out what the easiest degree you could get was. <laughs> wow. And it turns out there is a PE degree that you don't even get a certification to teach, and I have that degree. You have that degree. <laughs> So I got my I got my degree. This guy is brilliant. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to get through school, and I got through. And uh, so yeah, I have a call. Actually, my father and I are the only two in our family that uh, now he's got a master's degree, uh -huh. and he looks way more homeless than I do. But <laughs> he, he's got a master's degree in English, so uh, he's got a he's he's even got a master's degree. So. So, so all those stereotypes are just falling by the wayside. People think folks who 
uh, live in what well, how they call backwoods or right. redneck are intelligent or educated a lot of times. Folks in the city. Right, exactly. Unless, yeah. Well, Billy Bob was here. He's from Arkansas. So yeah, crap, yeah, yeah, you know. We're same. trying to make our. We're trying to make it. I hope so. I hope you know. By the time they meet us and uh, realize there's something different, I think when the show first started, I think mm -hmm. if you just look at the the you know the face shots we had, I don't know that even A and E knew what they were getting. You just see these guys with all these beards and. They thought it was gonna kind of be like swamp people, but with beards. Yeah. Then they watched the pilot, and they actually caught up and said, "This is not the show that we ordered." And we were like, "Oh no!" And they said it's way better than the show we ordered. And they said this is actually funny. And they they saw this family funny thing in there, and so uh, they actually picked up thirteen episodes without even the public seeing it. That's how much they thought it was gonna work, and turned out uh, they were. But it is. I think our family's much like. Most families in America, and we got a crazy uncle, we got an old school dad and mom that wants to cook and take care of everyone, and you know how we work together and interaction with brothers and kids, and yeah, you know, it's a it's it's what happens in America with all of us. Now maybe everybody doesn't have a giant beard and long yeah, hair, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but you can see that in the family. I think that's why it resonated so much, and it was you know we had a prayer at the end and it was positive, and so the whole family can watch it. And I think all those elements came together. And, we're still going now. Still it's been going. five years, and we're still filming. Yeah, and I was oh, wow. the show earned eighty million, and it's advertised itself first nine months of two thousand thirteen. The merchandise Damn. has generated another four hundred million of revenue. So, Heather, the reason well, why they ain't paying me enough. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, they ain't seen but, that money. <laughs> but you know, that's one of the reasons why I've been trying to grow my beard in the whole time. Mm. Man. Is you that know? all you got? That's all right. I got, Willie. Oh my God! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Remember, we had this car. He needs vagina. Juice, man, the juice. right. What? My first girlfriend had a bigger beard than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, man. Uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, this is very good. It was a great interview, man. It was all good until I made fun of his beard. Oh, shit. We're going to open up these phone lines 888 742 3345. We're going to talk about Willie's new book. It's called The American Fisherman. So, all anglers, call up right now. Sway in the morning. Sway in the morning, say four or five. Okay, so if you watch Duck Dynasty, Willie is here, man. The, the, new, the new book is The American Fisherman, How Our Nation's Anglers Founded, Fed, Financed, and Forever Shaped the USA. And I was thinking, like, what, you know, this this certain questions I always have about fishing and the fishing industry. And, and then how did it become a business here in the States? And this book pretty much gives that. Yeah, it goes back. Yeah, it goes back through, especially when it was, which is still, I mean, fish and the fishing industry is still a huge business uh, all over the world, obviously. But in this country in particular, I mean, because back when it was harder, you know, to have food, I mean, they weren't doing it. This wasn't farm to table. It was farm to table where you were going to die. So mm. you had to figure out real yeah. quickly how to get some, some food. And so we go through like the Revolutionary War. George Washington was a commercial fisherman. In fact, it funded pretty much everything, mm -hmm. all his other businesses, but he knew how to fish. So whenever those guys were starving, you know, trying to fight, you know, the Brits, uh, fishing is what ended up saving the day. Lewis and Clark is where they went on this Western expansion uh, to figure out all these trails. They ran out of food, and guess what they ate? They fish. Fish. In fact, they ate so much fish, they were sick of them. Uh -huh. uh, and so we, we just go through about presidents that like to fish and, uh, you know, and, and how it really did shape our country, the economy of it, you mm -hmm. know, with the with trading fish, waterways, navigation. I mean, a lot of these things had a lot uh, to play in our country. So I think now, you know, sport fishing came probably in the mid-1900s, especially after World War II. In fact, there was an emergency fishing kit and all the – uh, the soldiers, the truth, mm -hmm. just in case you got shot down, just like we see on the movies, you know, you had a little fishing kit, you mm -hmm. could try to fish, you know, rather than eat a seagull or something like that. You, know, you needed something to eat if you were stuck out there. And so mm -hmm. when all these uh, men and women came back home, you saw really then them getting into sport fishing and just trying to get their mind off of it. Franklin Delano Roosevelt mm -hmm. fished really to get his mind. You can imagine World War II and that's where he went. He went fishing and he basically used the United States Navy as his, as his ride, as his, uh, 
uh, Uber, I guess, back in the 30s and 40s. To, I mean, I was thinking like today, you imagine like one of the presidents just jumping on, mm-hmm. you know, a warship just to take them fishing. We everybody throw a fit, you know, but yeah. that's what he was doing back then. How much money you think that cost taxpayers when he was going out on a warship to mm. fish? Well, I guess they were going anyway, but the yeah. troops. <laughs> I'm trying to be positive, <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the troops loved it. Can you imagine having a president on there and fishing and and talking? So the troops actually love, you know, love having the president on there. And for him, he was handicapped as well so it was just his way to get away in fact he had churchill at, at camp david and they sat and fished you know mm-hmm. they're talking about you know the nazis and all these things going on in the world and uh because there's something about it man i mean you yeah, yeah, this, yeah you I'm get out I'm there and you get away from your phones and everything just staring at water and uh it can really kind of bring you down and you know just bring you back to uh earth and yeah. you know the life we live in and i love it. i just love getting out of all the chaos and uh I don't know how y'all do it up here in New York. There's a lot of chaos. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. Really. In West it's Monroe, difficult. I find me a little riverbank and a bucket and a cane pole, and I can sit there for a few hours and just kind of uh, remember how I grew up, I guess. In mm-hmm. the book, you actually talk about there's some place in Manhattan where they used to fish at. Is there a park? Well, or... I was. Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. that was him. That was yeah. uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Where they? I don't think it. I don't think they're still fishing there anymore. And yeah. I actually fished uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to eat fish out of no, no water man. around it. Right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. I fished right off the. Uh, I actually went out from New Jersey, and we were fishing for sea bass, I believe, and we could see the whole uh, New York skylight uh, as we were fishing in the evening. It was really cool. You know, mm-hmm. I've gotten to do these cool. You know. Uh, that was actually before Duck Dynasty, but I actually gotten to go around the country and fish and hunt in a lot of different places, and uh, it's great. I mean, that's one great thing about this country is just all the natural resources that we have. At our disposal. The other thing I think is great about this book is you, you talk about um, the folks that were indigenous to this country, the Native mm-hmm. Americans, and the role they played in teaching the early on settlers. Or at least they had techniques in fishing that was far advanced, uh, yeah. right? Oh, we'd have starved to death without learning. Yeah. I mean, because these cats, they don't have <laughs> line or hooks or anything like that. I mean, they're figuring out how to make little baskets. And they would actually herd them in. They'd all get out in the stream, and they would herd these fish like cattle into their homemade baskets. And mm-hmm. so they were teaching, you know, a lot of the people that were coming over, teaching them how to fish. And they were you know bringing fish you know uh supposedly the first thanksgiving they brought fish you know they brought fish over and mm-hmm. eel and uh all these kind of you know things that they knew how to fish so we did learn a lot from them and it was just amazing how they were able to uh, uh to get in we talked about that in american hunter as well about how they hunted and it's just incredible yeah. when you when your survival is based on it you, you either get good at it or i guess you die so. or you die so i would have fit way in the morning the smartest pe teacher i've ever heard <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Yo, Willie really just broke that shit down, huh? And there you have it. The book is available now, you know. Uh, but you can get the book anywhere, right? Oh, yeah, you can get it anywhere. So it comes out tomorrow, but, uh, yeah, there's pre-orders today. And uh, but tomorrow it'll come out everywhere. And so, yeah, we're excited about getting it out there. All right, we're going to take some calls, too. Tracy, you got a question? Yeah, Willie, in general, when people think about hunters, outdoors in general, anglers, they usually just give that to men. But you have a chapter in there talking about the rise of the great female angler. What history can you tell us about We do, that? yeah. We went through and talked. because, And early on, even in this country, not a lot of women fished. And so... Uh, but it's really around the, the 20s, 30s, you know, you started seeing women uh, get into f- sport fishing and, uh, and and actually fishing just to help their families and bring things in. We highlighted uh, some of those women. Some of them were super showmen. You know, they could get out and uh, really dazzle a crowd. And they would give all these techniques. And so just like everything in this country, I mean, half our country is women. And so now we see that as a growing, we, we mentioned that about hunters as well, uh, the biggest growing segment is amongst women, you know, who are getting into that. Again, it's the same way and so they say now i don't know i'm a fisherman myself but women are better fishermen than men uh, Mm. because they're more patient because you learn a lot about people when you go fishing you get frustrated people start i I move i'm a a spot mover you know and then i try to maybe steal a spot you know from somebody that's catching them but women are generally uh more patient and so uh, bad that's bad angler etiquette by the way (laughs) what what he just said what fishing spot? Yeah, it's still a spot where somebody else is catching. Well, you can get as close. <laughs> Me and my brothers, right before we just started hitting each other in the face, if your cork couldn't touch the other cork. That was the rule. <laughs> the, 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 I could get damn. as close as I could yeah, to that yo, cork without touching it. Man, we used to fight. Me and my brother, you come in my brother's spot, you taking a three piece home with you. That's you know what oh, a three fought, piece. Oh, we fought okay. like crazy. Yeah, don't, be, yeah. don't be stealing my spot. Yeah, yeah you can't steal somebody's <laughs> fishing spot, right? Damn. 
Uh, we're going to go to these phone lines, 888-742-3345. Uh, we got uh, Lamont from Virginia on the line. Hey, Lamont. Hey, what's up, Lamont? Yo, Big L. Hey, what's going, Sway? Heather, Tracy, Willie, how's it going? How you doing? Good. Hey, good. Yeah, um, I'm a fisherman myself. I actually just went trout fishing this morning. I caught four brown trout. You know, they stocked oh, wow. out here. But um, I just want to know uh, how hard it is or, like, some tips on getting um, – like your online thing going because I want to get my YouTube channel going and you know um, I just want to know uh, get some pointers or some tips on how to keep it going and make it successful. Uh, well, grow a really big beard. Uh, that's the first thing. No, I'm just if, if you just, can, if you can. <laughs> Sorry, Dwayne. <laughs> I, I've not, you know, I don't know. I mean, for us, it just kind of happened. We weren't out kind of looking to do anything like that. And uh, people uh, saw us. There was a producer in Los Angeles that said, man, you guys need to have a show. And I said, I don't really think we're that interesting to have a show. And uh, my wife said, oh, no, you are. You, you and your family aren't right. And so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the key is just doing what you like to do. And if you do that and can, you know, you got to be a good storyteller. That's really television or music. I mean, anything. it's about telling a story, right? And so the better you can tell a story. And we grew up in my house, so that same table that – that we sit around now for the end of the show, we would sit there and we would tell stories. And so we only had three channels, so it wasn't like we was watching TV. And when, when we ate, everybody sat down to eat, whether you're hungry or not. And so we would tell stories about fishing or hunting or whatever the stories were. And so, and as a kid, like if you're going to take the stage, I always say it was like, man, the spotlight's on you. And my dad would then be like, this better be good if you're taking up our ears to hear. <laughs> so you had to become a good storyteller. And so for us and growing up, that's the way we did it. We didn't have any money and uh, uh, it was a way for us to tell stories. And now we do the same thing just on television or the internet or whatever. So, And in the form of a book. Lamont, thanks for your call. You're a citizen. Let's, wait in the Let's go to Oklahoma. We got Michelle on the line. Yo, hey, Michelle. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for that historical uh, information you gave in regard to the Indians and helping with the fishing and all of that. Um, second of all, I think um, I saw the episode where you guys shaved your beard, and I was utterly surprised at how handsome you guys were. I mean, I'm, it got rid of all the little stereotypes that I had in regard to that bushy beard. You guys look, I mean, I was impressed. <laughs> the third thing I want to clarify I was driving, and I think you said your father had a master's degree, and I wanted to make sure I heard that correctly. <laughs> you sound surprised. <laughs> I mean, I'm inspired, okay? I'm, let me tell you, I'm inspired. I mean, I want, did I hear it correctly? He has a master's degree? <laughs> he does. He has a master's degree from Louisiana Tech. It's legit. In English. Wait, you said English. In right? English, yeah. Well, I think his I think he had a PE degree as well. And then he got his uh master's in English. So uh he's uh he's a lot smarter than how he looks, which I think that's what he likes. He likes people thinking he's dumb, but he's actually smart. Uh it's better than the opposite, believe me. All right. And thanks for your call, Michelle. You're a citizen. Let's wait in the morning. All right, we got JJ from Southern Louisiana. JJ. Hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Morning, 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 Sway. Uh, Heather and uh, Tracy Hype, Del G. What's going on there, Willie? Hey, how you doing? Hey, Willie, I'm from Thibodeau, man. I'm from Thibodeau. And, uh, Thibodeau, all right. Do you have yeah, a translator? Because yeah. we may not be able to understand you if you're from Thibodeau. <laughs> oh, you see? You see? There, there you go. There you go. You know, we, I just left we, New we, Orleans, so I believe me. I've been uh, hearing a lot of it. Uh, I'm, us, us, from, us from Southern Louisiana consider you guys up there on the north side, Arkansas. Yeah, that's why I was uh, making fun of you before you said that, so because I knew it was exactly. coming. Exactly, you already know. You yeah, already I knew know. it was so wait, What is this about? Is it a rivalry between Southern and Northern? Uh... Well, they yeah, well they think they're better cooks and fishermen and hunters, and I mean that's what they think, and so just oh, oh, oh we are. <laughs> I'll rest my case. <laughs> Just because you're south about 10, you're better at everything. So, well, but hey, we got a TV show, so we got that. <laughs> we, we put West Monroe on the map, so okay. Y'all got to come to the bayou to get the alligators, though, don't you? Uh, no, we got alligators up there. What are you talking about? I mean, what is this? Like Bloods and Crips, man? Come on, man. <laughs> We're just working something out here. We, we, it's going to end up good. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, go ahead. JJ, go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. All right, all right, y'all have a good day now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's a way to give that's up. That's my all state right, right there. There it is, man. Well, Willie, man, I want to thank you for coming by, oh, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then, um, um, next time you come to New York, New York, stop by. And so when I come to Louisiana, I want to I come see a different taste of America. 
from your from your perspective. Is that all right? You are always invited. Thank you very kindly. Stop man. in West Monroe and ask where we live. Somebody will show you the Somebody way. Somebody will show? Okay, <laughs> cool. They're not going to stop me at the gate, right? No, no, no. no. Okay. No, all right. no, no. Okay, they cool. Won't. Okay, good, man. Uh, Willie, thanks for coming through, man. Side, the book man. is The American Fisherman. It's out tomorrow. Make sure you pick it up. Season 11 of Duck Dynasty, Wednesday, November 16th. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. What's the day today? Today's, Today's the Monday. 14th. Yeah. 14. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Go, 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 go. okay, good, good. <laughs> tomorrow then. No, no, no. no. Next oh. week. Next week. Wednesday. Wednesday. This Wednesday. This week. This Wednesday. I thought it was out tomorrow. Today's Monday. Yeah. The yeah. book is out tomorrow. It's season tomorrow. 11 of Duck no Dynasty is Wednesday. No matter what day of the week it is, it's tomorrow. <laughs> okay. That's when it comes up. <laughs> okay, there it is. All right, man. Jesse Smollett, is he here? From Empire? He's not here yet? Okay, Sway in the morning. We got Celebrity Wire up next. Yeah, we got to talk about Kanye West and possibly running for president. Yo, Willie, who, who's your favorite rapper out there, man? My favorite rapper? Oh, man, I got to say Nelly. Nelly? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shake <laughs> <laughs> It's Sway in the morning. Only from Shay 45. <laughs> oh. 